Hi everyone, uh, this video is intended for uh, those who are studying energy conversion. So it is basically a sort of introduction or a review of some of the information that uh, maybe you have studied in high school. So just try to highlight the important concepts of magnetism and electromagnetism for the purpose of understanding better the energy conversion in different devices like transformers, like motors and uh, generators. So let's start with magnetism. There is something called the magnetic field. And the magnetic field basically it is a three dimensional field that surrounds a, a magnet and these lines are invisible uh, however if we uh, try to have an iron filling as we can see here in this picture and we spread those iron uh, iron filling around the magnet those iron filling will actually be in the path will be aligned with the uh, with the magnetic field lines if you have a canvas, then the canvas it will align itself uh, with the with the uh, north and the south pole of your of your uh, magnet, and they will point actually to the di direction of the magnetic field lines from the starting of the north to the south. And so I can see here that the magnetic field lines they are basically coming from the north pole. And then they are terminated at the south, the south pole. Now, these magnetic field lines represent what we call the magnetic flux. Okay? And as I mentioned, it comes from the north to the to the south. Now, when we look to these uh, magnetic field lines, we'll see here at this location at this location they are close to each other so we say that the magnetic flux density is high here close to the poles now if you go away from the magnet or from the side to the magnet you see that the distance between these lines are getting bigger and bigger and means that the magnetic field uh, strength or the magnetic flux density is low at these areas now any magnet has a north and a south pole. And regardless how many times you try to cut the magnet into halves to small pieces, always you will have north and the south poles. And as you might know that if you have the magnets that north close to the south, then you will have an attractive force. If you have both are north and north uh, poles, then they will you will have a uh, a repulsive force between uh, between the two or they were rebuilt from each other now what is a magnetic material a magnetic material is the material that can be magnetized or changed into a magnet not every material is a magnetic material we know that there is a difference between a conductor and uh, an insulator or dielectric material. A conductor can allow the current to flow or the electrons to flow, but the dielectric material, no, it will not allow the current to, to flow. So this is a difference between a conductor and a non-conducting material. Now for the magnetic material is a bit different. Even uh, conductors like copper and aluminum, these are we know that most of the electrical systems are made from these conductors, but still they are not magnetic material. You cannot magnetize them. You cannot change them into, into magnet. But magnetic materials like iron, like cobalt, like nickel, so these are materials that are called ferromagnetics. So you can change those into, into a magnet. You can change them to a permanent magnet or into a temporary magnet magnet as well so it, it, it can be magnetized and this can happen by rubbing the the metal with a magnet or exposing it to a very strong electromagnetic field then you can magnetize these uh, materials now after you magnetize them you can demagnetize them by uh, subjecting them to a, a strong uh, strike by heating them or hitting them very very hard then you can demagnetize these uh, materials 
That's enough about magnetism and about magnets. Let's talk about now electromagnetism. And here you have the interaction between the electrical current and the magnetic field. And this is very, very important in electricity. And a lot of things that we have around us, they are based on the principle of electromagnetism. So whenever there is a current, that flows in certain direction, then you will have a magnetic field around it. So the electrical current actually is producing the magnetic field. And this is something very important, the relationship between the two. And here comes the word electromagnetism. So one causes the other. The electric current, they will cause the magnetic field around it. And as you can see here, uh, the, these magnetic fields, they are in circles around the conductor. And the, the direction and the strength of the magnetic field, it will depend also in the direction and the strength of the current that create that magnetic field. Now, how to determine the direction of the magnetic field? We use the right hand rule, basically. So. Uh, your thumb will be in the direction of the conventional current and the rest of your four fingers will be the direction of the of the magnetic field. So that's how we specify the direction of the magnetic field if we have the current going into a, a conductor. Now, if the current is going into a coil, then we do the opposite. Now, your four fingers will be in the direction of the current and your thumb will be in the direction of the magnetic field. So this is will be the direction of the current and this will be the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case here, the magnetic field will be uh, emitting from this side and terminating at the other side. So this will be your North Pole and this will be the South Pole because we agreed that in a magnet, the magnetic field lines goes from the north to the south. So here you are creating an electric magnet. And you are actually controlling where is the north, where is the south pole, because if you reverse the direction of the current, then you can reverse the north and the south pole. The last thing I'd like to talk about is Faraday law or of induction that how I can induce a current when we have a magnetic field. There is another relationship. We know that now when we have a current flowing, there is a magnetic field around it. But also I can induce a current in the presence of the magnetic field. And how is that? If I have a coil like this, and I'm connecting to it a galvanometer. This is like a very sensitive ammeter, so it can measure a very, very small current. Now, this is a magnet, a magnet. So again, the magnet will have a magnetic field lines around it from the north, terminating at the south. Now, if the magnet is a standstill like this, there will be no induction, no current will flow in this uh, in this coil. However, the moment I start to move the uh, the magnet in any direction, then I will start to induce a voltage and a current in that coil. And you can see here that your galvanometer will start to uh, uh, respond to this movement. Now, even if you enter the magnet inside the coil and st keep it standstill, then this induction will, will stop. So it's not just a magnetic field, but it has to be a magnetic field that changes with time. Then you will have an induced voltage. And this is what really Faraday uh, discovered, and this is considered as one of the most fundamental laws and the most important laws in most of the electrical energy devices that we have around us. In mathematical formula, you can say that that the induced voltage is equal to minus in n is the number of turns that we have here times delta phi by delta t, which is the rate of a change of the flux coming out of the magnet. So the faster you move it, the more voltage you will be inducing. The more turns you will have, then the more uh, voltage you will be uh, inducing. The higher the flux, 
flux strength you will have, also the more voltage you will be induced. So this is a very, very fundamental concept about uh, magnetism and electromagnetic. You will need this little background to understand the energy converging devices that you will learn about in transformers, motors, and generators.